Hi, I'm Phantom. A couple days ago, I released a teaser for my new revamped YouTube setup. I was planning on making content pretty quickly. Obviously, I released the teaser for it. Uh, however, I got hit with a little bit of an unexpected spike in working all the fucking time. I have no time for anything, no time for content. However, working nonstop has done one good thing for me, and that has made me want to play video games. More specifically, World of Warcraft. I've been a big World of Warcraft fan, and I've been playing World of Warcraft for, or at least Warcraft games, for practically my whole life. Uh, I played Warcraft 3 way, way, way back. It was because of my dad, actually. My dad and my uncle that I even got into World of Warcraft in the first place, back around the beginning of Burning Crusade. So I've been playing for a while, and honestly, I was really, 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 really enjoying Shadowlands. Got my character fully leveled up, picked my Covenant, Maldraxxus, because Maldraxxus is fucking awesome. Uh, got all my Renown, got all my Covenant gear, I did a full run of Castle Nathria. Uh, I've gotten to the highest levels of everything except the Twisting Corridors in Torghast, so I feel like I've gotten a good sense of what 9.0 Shadowlands is. I've done all the content there is to do. I've reached the late, late end game. All there really is left is redoing dungeons and redoing raids at difficulties higher than the difficulties I've already done. Other than that, everything's done. It's just a couple dailies, occasional weekly, and rep grind. So I, I feel like I'm pretty safe to assume that I know what I'm talking about when I say the things that I'm going to say in this video. And first and foremost, probably to encompass everything about Shadowlands that I possibly can in a single statement. Shadowlands is amazing. What they have is great. The visuals are amazing. The story is amazing. The ideas are good in concept, but there just is not enough of anything when I said that I got spiked with a bunch of hours so I've been playing the game a lot, guess what? I started playing a week ago. In a week and a day, I have gone from being a fresh 60 in Shadowlands who had only just picked my Covenant to being renowned 40, having everything unlocked, fully upgraded Covenant gear, having done a run of Castle Nathria, done every single dungeon on Heroic, I've done everything there is to do. And if 9.1 was not around the corner, I would be very upset because there's no content. And it's not like this has been a short period. 9.0 has been going on for a very long time. One of the longest gaps between having any sort of update or content that we've well, possibly ever had. Well, that's not entirely true. They did add glasses in. And, and everybody wanted those, right? Everybody wanted glasses. However, um... What I'm doing right now is something very similar to a, a lot of YouTubers and Twitch streamers and just kind of big influential people in the World of Warcraft community have been doing for a while, and that's complaining. See, it's warranted complaining. All of them complaining because there's not much to do, there's not much to say, there's not much to stream. The only real way to do anything is if you're doing Dungeons and Raids, and th there's a reason for that. The only reason that anybody wants to, or the only reason that Dungeons and Raids are even slightly interesting is because the Dungeons and Raids are the best part of Shadowlands so far. They're done amazingly well. The raids are done amazingly well. Like, Castle Nathria is an awesome raid. I, I have, to put it into perspective, okay? The last raid that I have completed on the section that it was launched on was Nighthold. That's how long it's been since a raid has come out that genuinely interested me enough as a player to play it start to finish. Like, I'm a huge fan of Nizoth, the old gods. I absolutely love uh, Queen Ajara and the Naga. I've been wanting to play a Naga since I first found out World of Warcraft was a thing because I absolutely loved playing the um, the Illidan questline in Warcraft 3 when you got to control the Naga. That's one of my favorite moments in gaming and it was for most of my childhood. So to say that I actively played through the entirety of Castle Nathria when to this day I still have not found the drive to go all the way to or all the way through 
the Eternal Palace, that means something. It is, the, the raids and dungeons are extremely well done. But me complaining about everything else is extremely unhelpful. Asmongold, Preach, Bellular, all these big heads have been complaining about it being bad, but the reason that they're being unhelpful is because they give absolutely no constructive criticism when they complain about it. They'll just say, oh, this is bad, I hate um, the fact that you're limited with your, what are, what are they called? Conduits? The fa that's all I ever hear is just, oh, it's bad. Oh, Torghast? It's not hard enough. They don't, they don't say what you could do to make it harder. They don't say what you could do to make it better. They just say, Torghast isn't hard enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact opposite of what they do. I'm going to make a complete list and I'll break it down into sections. I'll put some timestamps some, somewhere over here uh, showing like when I'm going to go through stuff. I'm actually going to break down the problems with Shadowlands and what Blizzard should have done to have made it as great as it possibly could be. Because like I said, Shadowlands is amazing. Everything that they did make is great. There's just so little of it. Like, extremely little of it. Nobody should ever have to pay a full box price for a game release and a $15 monthly subscription for a game that they complete in a week. Like, I've been working full 8-hour days at my job on top of it. It's not like I have all the time in the world. It's not like I've no-lifed it or anything like that. In, in the time, I, I haven't even only been leveling or grinding my character. One of my friends that I play video games with a lot decided to join me, and he's also almost completely through the entirety of Endgame Shadowlands, and he's been playing for like three days less than me. But the three, the three sec, er, not the three, the four sections I'm going to break this whole shabam down into is one, Torghast and the Ma, two, Covenants, three, World Quests, and three, the Endgame Systems. Now, World Quests and Torghast and the Ma are going to be kind of connected, so I'm I'm sorry if I repeat myself a little bit in that section of the video. I will try my best not to, but I am a rambler. This stuff has been on my mind. In fact, I rambled for practically my entire day at work to myself about it, so I got a lot to say. But first up, I'm going to talk about Torghast and the Ma. Torghast can be broken down, or Torghast and the Ma, I should say can be broken down into three main issues that I have, and I'm sure everybody else has, with Torghast. That is, it's boring, it's short, and there is no reward for doing it. The concept of Torghast is fantastic. A mega dungeon roguelike grind that pits you against very powerful and dangerous foes inside of, well, Torghast, uh, specifically for us to go gain soul ash, go gain souls, and build ourselves up into strong enough beings that we can take on the forces of the Jailer. That's supposed to be the whole thematic behind it, that's supposed to be the reasoning for it, and instead what we get is like four monsters that are all reused assets, six short floors where two floors you don't really do any exploring at all, and unless it's your first time running the floor this week, literally no rewards. You don't even get a lot of gold for doing it. But uh, to keep myself from rambling, I'm just going to go down the list, starting with boring. Torghast is incredibly, incredibly lacking. The first time you run it, you're like, oh, wow, this is really cool. And then the second time you run it, you realize nothing is different. It's supposed to be a roguelike, randomly generated floors... And they're the exact same. The only thing different is the layout. The mon like for for example, I'm going to show you some pictures, okay? This is the first floor. This is the second floor. This is the fourth floor. And this is the fifth floor. Notice how I skipped the third and sixth floor? That's because the third and sixth floor don't have monsters in it. The third floor is a, a break, because apparently you need that after two floors. And the sixth floor is the only interesting part of the entire Torghast floor run. They have maybe three or four models um, specific to what section of Torghast you're running. Like, 
Say example, for example, you're running down the Ember Ward, okay? You have Mosshorn that shoots Fire Cone, okay? Mosshorn Mage that shoots Fire Ball, alright? And Rat. There you go. That's all of it. And and before you think, well, there's like six different subfloors that could have different stuff, right? The only difference is sometimes they shoot fire, sometimes they shoot ice, and sometimes they don't. That's literally the difference. And then occasionally, in different floors, they will have like special mobs. But they're not really special, they're just taken from other parts of the game. Like, you go to the ice place, you get the big owls from... Uh, Bastion. That's it. Other than that, it's again guys that mages that have occasional interruptible CC and melee guys that hit hard. And at the end of each floor, you're supposed to fight like a, a doorkeeper, right? A monster that guards the final step of the of the area you're in and you gotta beat him to get through, right? So what do you get when you're fighting the special guard? It's one of the things you've been fighting this whole time, just a little bit bigger. I did an entire run of the ice floor of Torghast yesterday on the highest like level you can do. And every single one, first, second, fourth, and fifth floor, had the exact same guy at the end. Literally the exact same, just larger mob. Now there are a million and one ways that they could make this better. Um, and I could honestly list, list things off for forever. But what I'm going to be doing a lot in this video is I'm going to compare what Blizzard thought of and tried to do with stuff other games have done that were done better. And to explain why I'm going to compare uh, World of Warcraft to what I'm about to compare it to, I need to iterate something right away that a lot of people actually seem to forget about World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is an RPG game, okay? Even though it may not feel like it sometimes, it's combat is strictly RPG. You have your buttons that you press when you're doing damage, your buttons that you press when you're tanking, which just like any other game is the exact same, okay? And what I'm about to compare it to is Dungeons & Dragons. Now, before you guys say anything, World of Warcraft is literally just automated Dungeons & Dragons as far as combat is concerned. The only difference between World of Warcraft and Dungeons & Dragons combat-wise is instead of saying you're gonna do something and rolling dice, you press the button, and then in real time, the computer rolls the dice for you and a number shows up on the screen. At first, you may be thinking that it's more interactive and more exciting, but if you fight the same monster 200 times, you are going to get just as bored as you would in Dungeons & Dragons. Now, not all Dungeons & Dragons um, sessions can be considered this way, but as somebody who has played a lot of Dungeons & Dragons, I can safely say that when you have, for example, a dungeon, Okay, let's say you are going to fight through a ice cavern that's going to have all these monsters in it. When you think final boss of an area, and, and before, before you guys say anything, Blizzard should be doing this. Blizzard should be trying to give their characters the most authentic RPG feeling they can get. And Dungeons and Dragons is like the classic RPG experience. When somebody is coming up with a dungeon in Dungeons and Dragons... There are various ways to make things interesting, okay? You can take a creature and give them a gimmick. Maybe make their move stronger than others of their kind. For example, you could have a dragon that breathes lines of fire, all right? But then the special one will breathe like a big cone or will do like a big emission attack or something like that. That's how people, when they're making Dungeons & Dragons levels, tend to make their monsters more interesting. Maybe they'll throw in a special kind of monster. Maybe they'll do something like that. Blizzard doesn't do that. They don't try to make their fight interesting. They just tack on more health. They don't even give it a special name. You get to the end of the floor and it's like, oh, what, what special guy is going to be blocking this floor? It's the same guy I killed 50 times in the last three floors, but he has more health. Like, they, they could at least try and give him a special name. Maybe have a reason for him to be there. There are many ways that they can make the creatures in the floors more interesting. For example, let's say it's the end of an Ember Ward floor. And the floor is guarded by one of the uh, Mossworn 
I think that's what they're called. Or is that the Kyrian ones? Either way, it's one of the knight guys who do the fanning the flames attack. You know, you just step out of the way all the time. Instead of having it just be a bigger version, what if they gave them some... Like, they could even make a random name generator. Give them a cool-ass name and give them, like, two special abilities. Hell, let's do this. Since Blizzard likes reusing their assets all the time, and don't say they don't, I have fought Lord Marogar or a reskinned Lord Marogar, every fifth monster in the last every expansion ever. Okay, an entire third of Ardenweald is the Drust, which are reused from last expansion. Don't try and tell me that Blizzard is actively trying not to reuse their assets. Almost the entirety of the Maw is reused assets. If they're going to reuse assets, and they want to keep Torghast interesting, give monsters at the end of floors old boss and raid mechanics. They have all these systems, like this is the thing Blizzard does all the time, they have all these systems that are sculpted, why don't they use the finished systems? If they, if I had to fight like a lesser version of Ragnaros at the end of an Ember Ward run, that would be fucking cool. That would be awesome. I would immediately be intrigued. The floors would be a lot less boring. I don't want to see the same monster over and over and over again, Blizzard. And if you want me to be interested in running through floors on Torghast, you need to put more enemies for me to face. Your traps are extremely boring. Make traps that actually require more thought. That would be one way to make it less boring. Another way to make uh, Torghast less boring would be if we had floors that were not just rotation runs. What if we had floors that are, like, for, here, instead of saying what if, I'm going to pretend, like, really, really fl fast. I'm going to show how easy it is, because obviously Blizzard doesn't do this. I'm going to show how easy it is to brainstorm ideas. I'm going to come up with three, three different ideas for floors that have nothing to do with combat against fighting other characters that would be super badass if you had it come across. For example, first, what if instead of showing up and you go, oh boy, I have to fight all these guys again, what if you show up and it's just an empty hall it can be randomly generated like the others it's empty you walk one room in and then the fucking gates behind you close and that either the jailer himself or that giant monster that shows up if you die too many times shows up and starts chasing you and it's like running the uh wrath of the lich king dungeon where the lich king chases you and you have to like dps check through the ice walls that get built in front of you in order to keep going wouldn't that be fucking cool Imagine that. That would break the monotony so much. So much. If we just were running for our lives and it was a DPS check to try and get to the end, getting through the walls and the gates and stuff that close, and avoiding the traps because we actually have to rush through them before the guy behind us kicks our ass. That kind of thing would be so much more interesting than just the standard grind of killing the same four monsters over and over again. What if we had floors that are, like, platforms? Like, platformers. What if we had platformer floors where the entire point of it is to try and get to the end without falling off the edge? Like, I know immediately people who don't like platforms are going to say that they don't want to do that, but that's the thing. People should have to do things that they don't want to in Torghast. Otherwise, it's not interesting. The idea that certain floors will be harder than others to the point that people wouldn't want to do them is a good thing. If you go into a room and you feel either excitement or fear based on how difficult it is, you're already more invested than I ever have been in a layer of Torghast in the entire time that I've been playing. And same goes for the Ma. The Ma should be, like, you, we have our occasional daily prestigia, but they're the same thing. Kill this one guy. Free ten souls. Kill these two guys. It's really, really boring. What we should be having is kind of like, more like a system of, it's like, they tried, okay, I'll give them this much. They tried to make the Maw scary and hard with the whole Eye of the Jailer thing. And to a degree, it almost worked. But it's not scary enough. When, when, once you're strong enough to DPS check through a guy picking you up off the ground, it's, there's literally no threat. There is no threat in the Maw. And what they should have is instead of having daily missions where it's like, oh, you have these three quests to get some Stygia, you should have monsters from Torghast, like these bosses that they should have. Like, don't get me wrong. I understand uh, that COVID happened. 
Blizzard, I understand COVID happened, and that was a big wrench in your plans. But this has been a recurring thing for the past couple of expansions now, okay? This is not something new. You guys have been... You guys really haven't released enough content for me to be actively willing and wanting to play your game since Argus came out in Legion. And that was the first time in a long time before that that I had gotten really into the game. You guys need to just make more. I'm going back to what I said earlier. You just need to make more. In Torghast, you need to make more monsters that you can fight, more diversity in bosses, more types of levels, more kinds of traps. It, you, what you have is good. There just isn't enough of it. it. There's not enough in the game to warrant us continuing to do stuff. And that brings me to, like, that it immediately ties into the second point of Torghast. It's too short. Like, I, I do each floor once a, w a week, and I'm done. I, I've completely explored all there is to explore. If I do it again, there's not going to be new kinds of levels. There's not going to be new kinds of monsters. It's going to be the exact same thing. There's not enough diversity in the types of things that you've done in order for me to be interested in it. It, it, it ends too fast, and that's another thing. It, like... It's not even six floors in a run. It's it's four floors in a boss. Why would you come up with this idea for a super, super, ridiculously badass mega dungeon and make it so short that I, I'm done before I've even really built anything? You need to have made the levels longer. If Torghast had longer levels, like say 10 level floors, level 5 is the break, and level 10 is the final boss, it's more. And, well, right now I know you're thinking, oh, that sounds tedious as hell. It wouldn't be tedious if they had extra floors. If they had extra kinds of floors and more kinds of monsters. Instead of just the occasional reskin Lord Marogar and the three different colors of the Mossworn Mage, the Mossworn Warrior, and the Mossworn Kyrian. They, they, they have, and I don't know why they don't do it, they have the resources to do it. They just didn't. And that, that, that ends up being a recurring theme through the entirety of Shadowlands. And I don't know if it's uh, something wrong with, like, higher-up corporate stuff. Maybe it's something to do with shareholders. I don't know where the values got mixed up. Also, to top it off, third point on Torghast and the Ma, there's literally no reward. If you run one, like, last-level run of each of the two wings of Torghast that are open, you have gotten all the soul ash you possibly can. You've gotten all the resources you possibly can. There, even if it was great and ridiculously fun, there'd be no incentive to do it. No reward whatsoever. And I don't... It baffles me. It actually just straight up baffles me. Why would they come up with something like this and get rid of the grind? There is no grind. Normally I hear, like, back in Legion, everybody complained, oh, the anima, or not the anima, the artifact grind is too long. Or the, in Battle for Azeroth, the uh, Azerite grind is too long. There is no Soul Ash grind in Torghast. And Soul Ash and Stygia are the entirety of Torghast. No, I'm not talking about Covenants net right now. I know about anima, and I know about all that stuff, but I'm talking about Torghast right now. Torghast is supposed to be the end all. It is supposed to be the big final thing. You're not just doing a dungeon or anything. You are waltzing into the Tower of Damnation that the Jailer himself is in. It's supposed to be the big end. And you go there once a week. And that's it. A game that does what Blizzard is trying to do. Correct. At least as far as rewards are considered. Is a game I personally have been playing a lot of called... Arknights. Arknights has a weekly system where you go through a really hard, really long level in order to get their currency, and it goes up to a cap each week, okay? That's pretty much exactly what Torghast is. It's a really long, supposed to be, a really hard run of content that gives you the special currency, which in Blizzard's case is Soul Ash, except for what they do is, once you run it, You've got your weekly stuff and you're done. In Arknights, you run it a couple times and sure, your weekly cap is finished. But the difference between Blizzard and Arknights is as you get farther down it, the cap 
raises incrementally. And it's not like Blizzard's raise where you get a huge chunk from doing the first level and then you get marginally less of an increase as you do the higher levels. It should be the opposite. I have no idea why Blizzard thought they should do it backwards. That doesn't make any sense to me, Blizzard. It should be you get a small amount of Soul Ash from doing the low level ones and it gets incre incrementally more. And instead of it being, once you get like your 50 Soul Ash from level one, that's it. You should be able to continue getting Soul Ash up to the cap of like 1,200. All right? But then let's say you blasted through level eight. Let's say they have 10 levels of Torghast. Let's say you blast all the way through level eight. The cap that you get per week should grow based on how high of a level you do. For example, people should be able to get their weekly amount of Soul Ash just by doing the lowest level, if that's what they want to do. If they're scared of doing the high tier stuff, they should be able to do it, but it should take longer. And that's something that Ark Knights does. If you can't get, like, if you're not strong enough to blast all the way through the super long levels, you only get a little bit. But you can repeatedly do the level, and you will keep getting rewards. And even once you hit that cap, of how much rewards you can get of that week in Ark Knights, guess what you still get every time you run it? A shitload of currency. You get a shitload of tokens to upgrade your characters. In Torghast, you get nothing. You get absolutely nothing. If you got all the Soul Ash for the week and run Torghast, you get like 20 gold. You should, Blizzard, you should have put in, and this would have made it better. This would have fixed the no reward thing entirely. You should have put in Stygia as a currency that can do more than just that. Either that, or you should have made it so that you can get like 5, 10, 15 Soul Ash per run. Give players a reason to run your stuff. I don't know why you are scared to give players in World of Warcraft a reason to repeatedly run your stuff. If somebody, like, I have never heard anybody in an MMORPG complain that they can keep doing stuff and keep grinding stuff forever. People want to waste their time playing your game. But instead of you letting them waste their time playing their game, you waste their time giving them no reason to. I want to log on, like if you made Torghast really fun, okay? You you did the whole Dungeons and Dragons aspect of throwing a shitload of gimmicks in and having a shitload of diversity in monsters, just trying to make things interesting so it's not just a monotonous press re buttons repeatedly. If you actively went out of your way to make it interesting, I still wouldn't play it because there's no reward. If I was able to get 5, 10, 15, or 20 Soul Ash per run, I'd be grinding that all day. People don't play, like, to, to compare it to other roguelikes, people don't play The Binding of Isaac and Hades to get rewards at the end. They do it because it's fun. Because they enjoy the roguelike grind. Your roguelike is neither fun or rewarding. I would love to play through a harder, more content-packed Torghast literally all day. I'm the kind of person who would probably, like, if Torghast was harder and I was earning Soul Ash for repeatedly running it right now, no matter how small of an amount, I wouldn't be making this video. I'd be doing it right now. I'd probably be staying up way too late every night and being tired as hell when I go to work in the morning because I can't stop playing your roguelike. And that's what you should want. You should, that's what you, that, that should be your goal. That should be the hope for you, Blizzard. You should be making content specifically so that people keep playing non-stop. And speaking of playing content non-stop, this is a good segue into the second thing that I had complaints about. And that is covenants. Covenants can be broken down too, into three categories. I can't do three with my controller, I can only do two. Covenant's problems can be broken down into three categories, okay? There's very little to do. There's very little rewards. And there's, just like before, not enough of it. To say, to, let's just go down the list, okay? Let's just go down the list. Little to do. What do you do in your Covenant? You grind 40 Renown. You get your one armor set and two mounts. And then you do your one special Covenant thing. You know, Night Fae have their garden, Maldraxxus has their Build-A-Bear workshop, uh, Revan Dreathrow's party, you know what I mean. But there's only one of it, okay? If you log in and do your stuff on that one piece of content, you're done. It's such squandered opportunity, Blizzard. 
you have these really cool, basically mini factions, and you only give us one outlet besides doing world quests for them. Like, I, I could just start blasting off ideas right now, okay? If in Maldraxxus, instead of just having a Build-A-Bear workshop, you should have the Build-A-Bear workshop, you should have doing stuff in the Theater of Pain, like actually fighting difficult combatants in order to get stuff, like, besides that, obviously. And then for a third one, you could have, like, training the fucking uh, Chimera monsters for flight. You could have it even be, like, tied into the lore, like, oh, Kyrian are flying around, Revendreth had their gargoyles, we need to keep up, we need to train, like, literal armadas of these flying chimeras. Already there. That's three different things you could do. That's so. That's three times the content that we have now. The other problem is, <laughs> it doesn't give you rewards. You reach exalted with your um, side like rep that's associated with your covenant thing. There are four mounts, one of each covenant. That's it. Other than that, it's pets. Why would I want to grind that, Blizzard? You you give me no reason. You give nobody any. Once we hit that mount, it's done. And it's just one mount. That's so much daily work for a single mount. And the mounts are all recolors of other mounts that already exist. Why would I do all this work for a mount that already exists? There should be more mounts. And that's, that's how you'd fix it, okay? Have there be more mounts. Um, have the daily stuff give either more anima or just more looks in general, more transmog ideas, there should be more rewards. Again, I can go back to what I said about Torghast, where you could honestly argue, well, if we had three different things that you could do, that'd be way too much to do. How are casual people ever going to keep up with that? Simple. Only require your players to do one. Let them choose which one they want to do, and then have diminishing returns for continuing to do the others. Just like with the analogy I was making earlier, with having a weekly cap that you fill, instead of having a weekly cap filled by doing one run, you should have a week, like a daily amount of anima that you'll get, like a flat amount. If you do three things, for, or like you do all the tasks in your thing, you'll get a flat 200, or a flat 500 anima, and then you can continue doing the other ones for marginally less. Like, oh, you do all your stuff in the other one? Here you go, 150 anima. Oh, you do all your stuff in the other one? Another 150 anima. It's a reason to do it. Reward your players for doing the content that you make, and then make enough content that the players want to do it. It's it, you're, you're thinking backwards. You're making a little bit of content, and then you're limiting how much of it we can do so that you can be like, Oh, did you do your... You, you've been doing this stuff all week. I don't know what you're complaining about. I've been doing this stuff all week once a day. And not having any reason to do it anymore. We need more to do, Blizzard. We need more rewards for doing things. Not just one armor set. I understand you made, like, one plate armor set for each faction. And technically there are recolors. But why do we only have, like, four recolors? The recolors are barely recolors most of the time. You could have had, like, drastically different versions of armor sets. If I could get, like, a gold-plated version of the Maldraxxus armor set... Oh my god, can you imagine that? And uh, could you imagine having a golden plated version of the different armor sets that you could get by grinding stuff out? That would be super, super, super fucking badass. I, I like the armor set, don't get me wrong. I've been using the Maldraxxus armor set ever since I got it, and I'm probably going to be using it for a really long time because it's absolutely amazing. But I got it, and I got it in a week. And now there's nothing for me to get. I have the armor set of the expansion. I could go get the Nathria one, but I just have to run Nathria three times and it's done. I already have half of Nathria's looks because I ran Nathria once. And you get Nathria looks from doing the one world boss a week that shows up. There's not enough there. I there's It's supposed to be the fantasy of helping this covenant of beings that have existed in the Shadowlands for a long time. Why is the only way I can help Maldraxxus is to... to run around with the like four golems that i made Th that's all maldraxxus needs obviously it's not but lore wise and gameplay wise it is i'm not helping in the theater of pain select new combatants i'm not training warriors and training monsters i'm, I'm going to the people finding out what these four or five golems want doing it and that's it the, the fantasy of maldraxxus 
is not there. Same can go for Revendreth and Bastion and Ardenweald. There are so many different things that we could be doing. You could have this whole, you have to uh, make souls atone for stuff in Revendreth. You could have souls like specifically assigned to you. That, that, those, let me quickly make three Revendreth ideas, okay? There's the parties, and then you could have a like dungeon where souls that are assigned to you are set there and you have to make them atone. And then you could take part in wild hunts because they had the whole wild hunt idea. See, I don't even have a character that's gone through the Revendreth Covenant. And already, I know ideas that you could do. Imagine that. You have a whole process where you go on a wild hunt and you chase down the souls along with a bunch of other Revendreth people. That would be fun. That would be cool. You practically have it in there as world quests where you just kill like seven things. You could have put in the time, effort, and resources into making a very, very interesting and fun mechanic and system that people can do. Instead, they just throw a party every once in a while. And that's the entire immersion into the Revendreth fantasy. The, the fantasy just is lost. Besides having the name Baron above my character's name, I don't feel like I'm a contributing part of Maldraxxus because I built four golems. There's people fighting around outside. Sure, I can go kick their ass, but I don't get anything for it. It's not like it's hard to come up with ideas. It's very obvious that they didn't. If they just sat down and brainstormed for three hours for each covenant, we would have four times the game that we have now. And that's sad. Because we waited a long time for Shadowlands, and we haven't gotten an update in how long. Did, where Did they really just sit down and this is all they came up with? They had all this time and this is all that they could come up with. It, it's hard to believe that the same company that made Warcraft 3 and Legion... Okay, and Wrath of the Lich King and Burning Crusade, it's hard to imagine that the same company that made these content-packed games and expansions can only come up with this little bit. People have a right to be upset. They paid a lot of money and are paying monthly to play your game, and there's nothing in it. To go into the next section, world quests. World quests can be very easily split down into two categories. They're meaningless, and they're reused. What? Why? What? What? What do you do to? Why? Give me one reason to do world quests. Okay, anima. Anima, you say? Okay. In a week, I've ground up enough anima to get everything I wanted. There's not enough to grind for anima. Loops around back to covenants before. There's not enough rewards. I got my armor set and I maxed it out, and I got my mount. If I felt like it. I could grind up the anima and dump it in to uh, get revered with the Stitch Masters and get the uh, super cool Chimera Monster that I really, really like. But why? I don't want to just run around with four golems all the time. That doesn't sound like fun. It, it, it's just not fun. And the world quests aren't interesting. It, I think people complained too much about the old world quests. Because everybody kept saying, oh, well, it feels dumb. It feels like this world quest feels pointless. I don't want to shoot. The birds as they're trying to grab the turtles. I, I don't want to do the Bejeweled mission. That's what Blizzard heard so much. And they're like, okay, you guys don't like these ideas that we have? How about we just make you redo the quests that you've already done? You are literally redoing quests that you did when you leveled your first character through Shadowlands. Even if you skip through the leveling process on your second character, you have still done every single world quest as a quest already. There is not one world quest except for the weekly world boss that you have not already done while leveling your character. It's just reused quests. And if I'm going to be completely honest, for the overworld, like the four sections of the Shadowlands, that's okay. Okay, we don't need crazy ridiculous stuff for the Shadowlands, all right? But then the Maw, there aren't even world, there aren't even world quests in the Maw. Why would you not put world quests in the place that's supposed to be the end game? I know I'm just complaining again. See, I'm, I'm doing what all the other content creators do. I'm, I'm doing the exact same thing where I just complain, oh, it's bad. Oh, I don't like it. Oh, they could have done more. Oh, I don't like this or that or that or this. Let me, just like I did with Rewards and Torghast, give you an example of another time that a company has done what Blizzard was trying to do, but better. But this time, instead of it being an app or a tabletop game or something like that, I'm going to use an example from Blizzard. Anyone else remember the Argent Tournament? 
I remember the Argent Tournament. Because I think the Argent Tournament was the most I have ever played World of Warcraft dailies. I absolutely loved it. It's not because of what the quests were. It's because there were reason for it. Lore reason to do it. In lore, we are training at the tournament and training each other at the tournament so we could assemble a group to go fight Ice Crown. And what do we do in the world quests? We run around to all the different tents and we train. We train on horseback. We duel people. We fight certain monsters. It had a reason for it. And the Ma is the best reason they could possibly ask for in Shadowlands. And they didn't use it. What, what possible thing could be a better reason to grind dailies lore-wise than to fight back the Jailer's forces, establish a foothold in the Ma, and gain Stygia and other resources to craft tools and powers to help us go through what could have been a much more intriguing and interesting Torghast. I would have loved it. Well, I guess I'd have to explain something. Okay, this would be how, if I were to be the one to do Torghast and World Quests and the Mom, I would make Torghast harder, and I would make it so that you would have to, but like I would, for example, let's say you're doing a platforming level of Torghast, okay? And there's all these platforms that you jump down, but occasionally there's the off one that has like a hook on it okay what if there were supplies from Venari that you buy with Stygia supplies that are needed to do certain parts of Torghast not like you can't get through the level but you'll go through the level with a lot less rewards if you don't have it there you have a reason to get Stygia and what if Stygia is something you get from world quests you have like you blizzard <laughs> It's not hard to give you reason. It's not hard to come up with reasons to do stuff. For example, let's say the week begins. Everything resets, okay? What's the first thing I do? Right now, the first thing I do is walk into the mod, do two runs of Torghast, I'm done. My interaction with the Ma and Torghast for the week is finished. What it could have been, okay? This is what it could have been. I come into the Ma, alright? And I have all these world quests to get Stygia. And I know, okay? I want to get the grappling hook from Venari. I want to get um, the jump pad from an from Venari. I want to get a item that um, lets me jump farther from Venari, and I want to get an item that makes it so that I'm not penalized for my first death. Okay, let's say that's what I need, and I need 1,300 Stygia in order to do it. I now have a reason to do the world quests because Torghast is now interesting. I now have a reason to do world quests that are in the map. That alone would be more of an immersive grind than the entirety of what there is now. I would grind through the Ma, fight the special forces, do the interesting fighting back, the jailer's forces thing. I gotta get water. Fuck, I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? stuff in the Ma, getting something that makes you jump farther. Okay, fair enough. Okay, okay, yeah. The Ma could have been a battlefront, an area where you have a reason to do stuff, the spot where you fight back the Jailer's forces, where you gain a foothold, get enough Stygia to get the items that you want and need in order to run through Torghast, and then you can go into Torghast and do the weekly grind of multiple runs of more randomized, more interesting, more diverse, more kinds of monster-filled levels of the roguelike potential that is Torghast, and it would have been fun. I would love that. In fact, I'd, like I said before, I'd be doing it now. The Ma should have been end game interesting. Instead, you walk in, you hit the same four monsters, you get your ten souls from the, the, the stone prison. The end. You got your weekly done. If you're not already renowned 40, congratulations, you're one renown higher. Next. There's just not enough there. Like, well, there is, there, there's stuff there. This didn't make enough of it. The Ma is small. It's not even a big area. There's no world quests in it. It's the same repeated monsters. Unless you got a quest from Venari, which there's only like 10 of, and then you're done, you, they're not repeating, you're done. And it just makes me, this is the same company that made Suramar, that made Najatar. That made Mechagon. This is the same company that made these zones. 
that are so immersive and full of content and they just god this video is way more ranty than i had originally planned it to be keeping on track okay keeping on track i've talked about torghast imagine for a moment that torghast gives you like soul ash every time you run it okay why would i need all this soul ash what happens when i have enough soul ash okay what if the rune car were at a shop a shop where you can spend soul ash to get account bound tokens that can be traded to brokers for other stuff would that make you want if if you had an endlessly grindable resource that can be used to gear up alts would you want to run torghast more i know i would if doing 400 runs of torghast meant i would not only have my legendaries but i was having fun and i could gear up other characters there's the alt problem fixed <laughs> And and peop I know what the re immediate response to that is. Well, then people could just keep running Torghast forever and they'd have all their characters leveled up. What's wrong with that? What is wrong with that? Why is Blizzard giving us a reason to continuously run their content a bad thing? It's not. It shouldn't be a bad thing. Running content should not be a negative. It should never be a negative. Okay? If people are complaining that there's too much to do, you did it right. Nobody has ever said the game really fucked up. There's just too many things for us to do. There's so much content. Nobody has ever complained about that. Have you ever heard somebody complain about that? Yes, BFA. When? BFA. They complained that there were too many dailies to do. Did you have to do the dailies? No. Then it's nothing to complain about. My girlfriend just gave me an excellent example. If you if your only complaint is that there's too much content to do, you have nothing to complain about. Now, if it was it, it'd be different if Blizzard was like, "Okay, Phantom, we'll do everything you said. We'll throw in two to five more areas of interest in each covenant. We'll throw in a whole bunch of new rewards. We'll we'll make Torghast more interesting." Have more different kinds of levels, have more different kinds of puzzles, have more different kinds of monsters. We'll do that, okay? But you have to do every single one of them or you get nothing. Then that would suck. I don't want to have to run 500 million things in order to get my weekly chest. But if instead of it just being one thing that you get at a time, you could trade in, say, the endless amounts of soul ash for tokens that you could account-wide send other characters to get some extra anima or account why they send other characters to level up their renown it's an option there should be options there is no option right now you do your you do you do your weeklies in world of warcraft now what on before i i, I i'm talking in circles on to the fourth problem with shadowlands okay the systems right now the systems in shadowlands make it so that you cannot get more than two runs worth of soul ash a week from running torghast there's no reason to limit that at all. Oh, but characters will get their, their legendaries too fast. Oh no, people are going to grind your content? Oh, shit, that, that's terrible. Why didn't I think of that? That's so bad, Blizzard. I can't, be I can't believe players who pay a monthly premium to play your game will continuously play your content. Those poor people actually getting to play a game that they're paying for twice. Whatever will they do? It, it, it's, it makes no sense. And also the other limit conduits. Like, I, I don't care too much about this because I never change my conduits. But right now, you're only allowed to change conduits a certain time, a certain couple of times, uh, based on how long it's been since you last changed conduits. Why? The only reason that I can think of is because Blizzard doesn't want people. Well, well actually, no, no, that's right. This have they said this in the preach um, interview with Ian Hezekostas. He said, and I quote, or I guess not, and I quote. But he said, in essence, the reason that conduit um, there's limits on conduit changes is because it, they're getting rid of the ability for players to feel like they have to repeatedly run out of the dungeon and switch their conduits or raid and switch their conduits every boss or raid to optimize it. That's a reasonable thing to be worried about, but it is the wrong way to fix it. 
if you were really worried about people wasting all the time of, and being bothered by having to run out, you would give them something like the tomes that you use to change talents so that they can change their conduits in the middle of a dungeon. G give them a 50 anima cost or going back to making soul ash a more grindable thing, give them a 10 soul ash cost item that they can just click and now they can change their conduits in the middle of wherever the hell they are for 10 minutes. And suddenly, literally nobody's inconvenienced by it. You're limiting it for the right reasons, but limiting it is the wrong thing to do. You're, you're not thinking, okay? You're, you're stuck in that same mindset that you've been stuck in for a while, Blizzard. You're stuck in the mindset of players can't run out of content if we don't let them do it. If, if, there's, four, if there's only four world bosses, all right, but we only let them fight one a week, then there they go. They've got content for a whole month. That's not how that works. We've got content for four days out of the 30 days that we are paying for. It's the wrong way to go about it. And people know. People feel it. They know it's the wrong way to go about it. That's why they're leaving. Blizzard, you have to get rid of this mindset you're in where you actually believe that limiting people and what they do is a good thing. Okay? I, I understand you have so many other expansions worth of content that people can go and do, but it shouldn't have it shouldn't be what they have to do. We need to have a reason to continuously burn as much time as we can into your game. Otherwise it's not worth paying for a subscription. Blizzard, if you cannot add more content into your games and not only like give us more to do but make it like repeatable, you need to get rid of the monthly subscription. If the only time that we have new content is a week every couple of months whenever a big point one or point two or point three patch comes out, we shouldn't be paying a monthly premium. All right, the game is already, to put it in Bellular's terms, a paid beta, okay? Everything's unfinished, everything's borderline broken, and you're not going to fix it until the next big 0.1, 0.2, or 0.3 patch comes out, we shouldn't be paying a monthly premium for a game that is not done. You're, you're in this borderline early access mindset where you keep thinking that you can ship it now and then fix it later. You can't do that if you're charging a monthly premium, okay? Small indie companies can ship an unfinished game and then fix it later because they need funding to finish their game. You don't. You are a multi, as far as I, I can't, I don't know if you're a multi-million or multi-billion dollar company. You have money. You have so many games. You have the resources to do this. You cannot keep shipping unfinished stuff. We're already, we already pay out of the box full price for the expansion, subscription-based games can't have nothing to do. You're, you, you, you think that it's fine, but the numbers are dropping. Okay, they're going to spike back up when 9.1 comes out and there's stuff to do, but then it's going to go straight back down as soon as people run out. Running out of stuff to do is the death of subscription-based games. You have to listen to us and really beef up your game. You have the assets, you have the resources, you, you have people who have the creativity, you need to find out whatever bottleneck in your company is slowing the shit down, and you need to eliminate it. Or you need to make the game no longer subscription based. If this keeps up, your game will die. And this has been said every expansion, I know, everybody always goes, Oh, we've ran out of stuff to do, dead game, game's dying, dead game, game's dying. But this time, every other time, there have been people who defend it, okay? There have been people with hopes. There have been people hoping and looking forward to and giving you the benefit of the doubt. That's not happening this time. Everybody's upset at you. Bellular was swearing like a sailor. Bellular never swears like a sailor. 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 He's been riding your guys' tail and praising you guys and saying, well, maybe I'll do better next time for years. And he's done. He's legitimately just cursing his ass off on stream because he's that mad at you. The Preach and Ian Hezekostas interview was a disaster. A disaster that showed so many people who had hope for you that their hope is misplaced. You don't have 
the right mindset to make the game what it should be. World of Warcraft became big because it was a game where you could just keep doing stuff. It was a world of so many different things to do. And now it's a zone that you visit once a month or once a week and then four zones that you take turns visiting each day. There's no world. It's no longer the world of Warcraft. Story-wise, thematic-wise, Shadowlands so far is arguably the best expansion you've had. The storyline is really coming in clutch because if the story and thematic were gone, nobody would be playing your game. And that's a problem. The game should be good without the story and without the thematic. Otherwise, it's just a pretty pile of shit. Nobody wants to play a pretty pile of shit. At this rate, everyone is just going to watch your cinematics as they come out on YouTube and not actually play your game. Okay? I've had a fantastic time playing Shadowlands. Do you know why? Because I didn't play it. At this moment, I maybe have two weeks total of days that I've played. And I don't mean that in hours. I mean, I've maybe logged on and played 14 different days. Since the game has come out. And the game's been out for what? Almost half a year now? More so than half, nine months. Nine months. The game the, the expansion's been out for nine months now, I'm I'm hearing. That's why I'm having fun. Because I've played start to finish and done the entire expansion. I've done the raid, I've done all the dungeons, I've done the campaign quest, I've fully leveled up the renown, I've done everything in fourteen days. Your thematic is wasted. All the potential that you had of these really, really cool characters, really, really cool worlds, an amazing idea for a mega dungeon, literally flushed down the drain. Because you just aren't being creative. I was able to sit here for, how long have I been recording now? An hour? Things, like, you, you could just have a board meeting. Spend, get your best creative minds together, and then for two hours each, come up with extra content for each section of the world. And your game would be a hundred times bigger and a hundred times more replayable. It's so much wasted potential and it sucks because I care about the game. All right. I have been playing Warcraft games for my almost entire life. Right now, Blizzard, your players are complaining because there's not enough content. The only people who aren't complaining are the people who are repeatedly running mythics. Do you know why? Because your raids and dungeons are amazing. And they overshadow everything else because everything else sucks. There are less mechanics in the entirety of all the floors of Torghast than there are in one boss of Castle Nathria. Your players are complaining about having no content. And if your answer isn't to add in more content, then you need, you, you're going to have to compromise somewhere. Because there is not enough content to warrant charging us monthly for it if you are not going to be will the, we need a sign blizzard because we're holding on we are hoping that you will do things better and the interview with ian it, it punched a lot of us in the nuts it gutted us a lot of our hope has now been replaced with disdain and i know you guys have like you guys have come up with great stuff in the past whatever it is it needs to be cleaned up and it needs to be cleaned up fast because your game is sinking i i, I to end the video, I'll say this. Blizzard, your goal, if you want to save World of Warcraft, should be to get your players to complain that there's too much content. Make content and actually put the time to make that content special. And your game, with how good the thematics are and how good the story is, will be in its prime and that's oh god I could only imagine I want that so badly if the people playing your game your subscription based game at that are complaining because there's too many things for them to do you did it right I want to be hopeful for the game I want to keep enjoying it and I don't want to stop but after just a week and a day, I'm hitting a wall. And that's just pathetic. It's not right. Anyways, 
Uh, thank you for watching. Video ended up being a lot longer. I thought it'd be holy shit. I just kept rambling for quite a long time. I'm probably gonna end up having to cut a lot of me repeating stuff out because I I fucking I rambled for how long has it been? An hour and a half? Oh my god! Almost an hour and a half. Oh, there's just so much to talk about. And sadly, almost all of my talking is, again, saying that there's stuff there, it's just not enough of it. We, as the players of World of Warcraft, we need to be more specific about what needs to be fixed, okay? Us saying, or us, by us I mean the players and obviously those who represent us. People like Asmongold, people like Preach, people like Bellular. They need to be more specific with what you guys say. Because when when you say something like Torghast isn't hard, that is about as helpful as or that's about as helpful and constructive as you walking into a burger joint, ordering a border bur border. Ordering a burger, taking a bite out of it and going, It's not good. Okay. Um is, is it undercooked? Is there too much sauce? It's not good, make it better. I, I you have to tell them what's wrong with it. Because obviously, if there's one thing we learned from the Ian interview, it's Blizzard themselves cannot figure it out. They don't have the mental capacity, they don't have the creative capacity, and they are way too out of touch with their base players to come up with it themselves and they need to hear it from us. Whether it's me who says it, or somebody else. We need to get that word out there if we want to save the game. We need to be loud enough for their shareholders and their higher up members and their directors to hear us. So please, if you agree with what I had to say in this video, if you liked any of the ideas that I came up with, or have your own ideas for very basic parts about Shadowlands that can be changed or fixed, please like the video, leave a comment of what you think would happen, and share it. Okay, you can share it on social media, you can share it with um, streamers or YouTubers. It needs to be spread. Make your own videos about it. We need to say something. Because right now, we're just repeatedly telling them that it's bad, and they're getting the wrong ideas from it. And if it keeps up, it's going to kill Shadowlands. There's always going to be a next expansion. But at this rate, it's pretty fucking far off. And I think I speak for a lot of people when I say I want to enjoy World of Warcraft now. Thanks for watching.